and the greatest of these is This is the last one. We have a couple things we want to tell you about. If you have a hymnal, go ahead and grab it. We can use it later. If you would like one and don't have one, let us know at oslcslc.org. We'll make sure that we get one for you. If you have your instruments, put them next to the where you're sitting or standing, and we'll use them later. Those are great things. And then we want to tell you there's lots of opportunities for you to to participate in our Christmas Eve services. There's a couple, many of them. There's uh, the traditional Christmas Eve service will be on YouTube. And Dave and I have a recording for Christmas Eve candle lighting, the, the fifth candle, how can that be? We have four weeks of Advent, but there's five candles. <gasps> so you can watch and participate and see what that fifth candle is all about. And there is the Rejoicing Spirits video that you can watch on YouTube also on our website. You can go to oslcslc.org to get all the links and all the YouTube connectors to get there. And uh, we hope that you participate and are able to watch all of them. They all have a different flavor. It would be really fun to have you there. Okay, let's join together, gather together, and start with our gathering song. Okay. Echo after me. We gather today, to sing to our God, to share time together, to laugh and learn and love. We gather today, gather today, week four of Advent. great gift that God sent, for the great gift that God sent, Christ. He sent Christ for us at Christmas. That's what we're getting ready for. Dave, don't you love Advent? And don't you love Christmas? I just love it. And it's such a lovely time of the year. The lights are outside. People have their Christmas trees up. It's so full. This time is so full of hope and peace and joy and love. Can you guess what our fourth candle is, is representing today? It's the candle of, let's see if I can do this, Dave. The candle of love, just like that. We've been waiting, the, the best for last, saving the best for last. There are so many songs about love when we looked, we can't do them all today, but we're gonna try to get as many as we can. Jesus said, I'm going to give you one commandment, and that commandment is to love one another that your joy may be full. Remember that? We've sung that a few times. Jesus gave us that commandment. Love everybody, not just some, but love everybody. And do you remember this song? Yeah. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. You guys sang that so beautifully. Was that last year or two years ago? I don't know, but it was awesome. You did a great job. So we're going to talk a little bit and sing a little bit about love today. And let's talk about the different kinds of love there are. There's different levels of love, isn't there? You can love a lot of things. You can love your family. You can love pizza. You can love your pets. You can love the weather. You can love spring. But there's a different kind of love, a different level of love. 
maybe usually love for our family and for God is deeper and it's a little bit a little stronger in our hearts maybe than maybe than the love that we have for pizza or spaghetti so we're here to share that love with you and want you to spread it to all the world over Christmas and every day after that Okay, let's do this song. The words are going to be up here. It's Jesus in the morning, or Jesus, yeah, Jesus in the morning, and then we'll lo do love him, love him. Okay, let's start with that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noontime, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Let's love him. Love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him at the noontime. Love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. All the time. We're going to go right into the our Advent song, our last week for the Island Advent song. We're going to sing for love this time. Get your instruments. I got my maraca. Cha-cha-cha. Can you remember what they all mean? What all of them stand for and remind us of? We have the candle of hope, the candle of peace, joy was pink, and today the candle is love. We have them all lit four weeks worth. Great. Let's read our scripture for today. Our scripture is John 13, 34. Jesus said to them, I give you, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. That's in John 13, 34. Let's do that again. Jesus said to them, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He says, love each other, everybody. That's pretty much what it's all about, and you will follow his way. Let's sing this little light of mine. I got my little battery candle here. Sing with me. You guys know this one. This little light of mine. different endings for that one, don't we, Dave? We do. Let your light shine. 
All right, let's see. Let's pray. Let's fold your hands and repeat after me. Okay, let me get my paper here. Hold your hands and repeat after me. Open our hearts, God, so we can receive your love and spread that love to others just as Jesus loves us. Amen. Jesus loves us. We know that song. Jesus loves me. Get ready to shout in the middle part, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so, and he loves you. Let's sing Love Like an Ocean. Okay, the ocean is big. Lots of love in the ocean. And then we'll go right into I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus. Okay, here we go. Got your actions? got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean I've got love like an ocean in my soul we're gonna go up and up and up so we can sing down in my heart the love of Jesus love of Jesus down in my heart I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy. Okay, now we're going to go to the Christmas song. Um, and when we sing the Christmas song, make sure you echo after me. I'll remind you that in a minute. But we're going to start it out with Jesus loves the little children. Those words will be up here. Thank you, Steve, for doing that for us. So you can sing along with me. Okay. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the all the children of the earth, they are precious from their birth. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Okay, now sing after me. I'll sing a line and then you echo like we've been doing. Okay. Christmas is coming. You sing. Christmas is coming. Light the candle for week four. Light. We'll do that again, Dave. I lost my place in the words. We're going to start it all over. I got lost. Christmas is coming. You sing. Christmas is coming. Light the candle for week four. All for candles, there ain't no more. Set up your nativity. Then wait patiently. Cause Christmas is coming. Jesus is coming. Christmas is coming. Jesus loves the little children of the world. 
witcheroo time already, right? It is. I'm following along now. I found my place on the page. Now it's time for our switcheroo song called Green Grow the Rushes. Oh, we change the words but count along. Green Grow the Rushes. Oh, we're going to start with four. Count with me. Ready? Sing your four songs. Green grow the rushes. Oh, what are those four songs? Four for the gospel writers. Three for the three magi. Two for Mary and Joseph. One for the baby Jesus. Switcheroo! One and one is one is all and evermore shall be, oh, evermore shall be. <laughs> Welcome. Did you make it past the switcheroo? We're sure glad you're still with us. Thanks for making it through the switcheroo. Uh, Judy's got uh, the old piano. Look at what that piano is surrounded by. Can you point out a couple of them, Judy? It's hearts. And it's hearts that our good friends and our good students left us mm, a little while ago. But we were so happy for that. And we keep them there to remind us of you, our young friends. Okay, so thanks for being here. OSLCSLC.org. If you want to have a hymnal, you know what else I was thinking, Judy, might not hurt people? Maybe you need a Bible. They're for sale out there. They have them in stores and they have them at the library. But if you need one, we're going to hook you up. We got the Evangelical uh, Worship Book, ELW Book, and a Holy Bible, New Revised Standard Version. We're going to look at both today. So if you got them, grab them, okay? Meanwhile, Judy, it's time to go to Germany. What? Let's go to Germany. Have you ever been to Germany, Judy? Yeah, I was there once. It's over here. You see where this is? I'm pointing it with this one. It's over there in your Europe. Here's us, Salt Lake City, Utah, Wasatch Valley. And Germany's over there. Germany is actually where the Lutheran church sort of started with Martin Luther and Katharina von Bora, whose um, baptismal journey, let's put it this way, uh, continued on this day, December 20, 1553. That again is older than me. That's a long time ago. She completed her baptismal journey and died on that day, but we celebrate her. Guess when, Judy? December 20. Yeah, December 20, 20 uh, 2020 in this case. Um, today we are going to start by reading from the Bible. Always a good thing to do, isn't it? Let's go to the Bible, and it's Luke chapter 1, verse 26. The birth of Jesus foretold, okay? What we're going to get into in a minute is angels and um, promises and announcements and Mary and a unicorn. What? Well, hang with us and you'll see where this is all going. This is from the Holy Bible, from what the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26, the birth of Jesus foretold. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth, called uh, Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The woman's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed. Have you ever been perplexed? That's, I think it's beyond confused, beyond wondering, beyond doubting, and beyond maybe even fear. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and you will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. By the way, Jesus means he will save, or he will save his people. So the angel Gabriel shows up. In what I just read there, the singular gospel account of Gabriel showing up, did he have wings? Did she have wings? Did Gabriel the angel have wings? I didn't read it. And yet, 
most depictions of Gabriel, lots of wings. So we're going to see a whole bunch of them in a minute. So Mary and the angel Gabriel, angel kind of means messenger, by the way. So this was a message, an important message for Mary that she would conceive and bear the son of God. Okay, Jesus. Um, Mary said to the angel, how can this be? And again, they talk back and forth. And there's, there's some sort of explanation about it. And then Gabriel finally finishes up and he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Like, I know it doesn't make sense now. I know you might be afraid of it or what's going on. You don't know. He says, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. So what I found kind of interesting is the whole story of the Annunciation, right? Sounds like announced, doesn't it? The Annunciation, meaning Angel Gabriel telling Mary what's about to happen, is only that much in the whole Bible. It's one big, long paragraph, okay? Anyway, here's some pictures. Judy, let's have some music underneath. Wait for the Lord. From that Annunciation, Mary had to wait, and all of humanity had to wait for the birth of Jesus. So Judy's playing a Taze community piece Found on uh, what page, Judy? I'll tell you what it is. 262. There you go. 262 in the ELW. You can follow along and we'll be singing from that in a moment. Page 262 in the ELW. But meanwhile, let me show you something. Look at this picture. You know I love my pictures, so I have to show you this one. This is from a woodcut from the time of 1500s. I've highlighted the yellow because otherwise it would have just been black and white uh, woodcut. At the bottom it says, the Annunciation to the Virgin Mary. And there's Gabriel. Does Gabriel have wings? Yep, there's some wings. And Gabriel is speaking in this case in Latin. Ave, uh, gratia plena, the Lord is with you. Yeah, this is Latin for hail, Mary, he's talking to. You are full of grace uh, and the Lord is with you. And Mary responds, uh, by saying, uh, let it be uh, to me according to your word. Those are the Latin words that are worked there. It's kind of like a comic strip. Do you ever read the comics? This was early on. This is 1500s stuff. Here's another depiction from, I don't even know. You know, I spend my time on the internet trying to find some interesting uh, copyright free public domain artwork uh, and came up with this one. This is from a Greek icon, like a Greek uh, Orthodox Church icon. And you'll see the angel Gabriel. Does he have wings or not? Yes, he does. He or she has them, right? And there's Mary over here. Mary is depicted in so much of this as reading. I don't know what she's reading. Maybe we can find that out, right? So there's a picture from the, oh gosh, single century somewhere back there in a Greek icon, right? Let's sing that little bit of Wait for the Lord, shall we, Judy? Let's do it. Here we go. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart. One more time. Wait for For the Lord be strong, take care. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. I said care, Judy, but you know what? If you care, that means you have some heart, don't you? You know what's interesting, Judy? On the same page is a hymn called Savior of the Nations Come. If you're just joining us, if you're just tuning in, that is number 263 in the ELW, Savior of the Nations Come. Listen to who wrote this. It goes all, it's attributed to, meaning maybe they wrote it, maybe they didn't, Ambrose of Milan in the year 340. Wow, again, you think I'm old? Do you think some of the songs are old? That is old timey, 340, okay? And uh, resurrected by Martin Luther, born in 1483. And he did the hymnal version. So these words that I'm going to share with you have been around for 
millennia. That's more than one millennium, right? Uh, and it goes like this, Judy. Let's say uh, I'm going to sort of speak it, and you can play it. Okay? Here we go. Savior of the nations, come. Mary's son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth. God has chosen such a birth. And announced it through Gabriel. Let's do one more verse. Verse 2. Here we go. Not by human flesh and blood, but the mystic breath of God was the word of God made flesh, fruit of woman, blossom fresh. Yeah, sort of translated or, or redone by Martin Luther. Old timey German tune. Where's Germany? Yeah, right over there in your Europe. We're going to go back to Germany in a minute. That's why I just want to make sure you know where it is, okay? There's your England. There's Salt Lake City. There's Africa down there. Okay. Did you know <clears throat> that the birth of Jesus and the announcement by Gabriel to Mary is also in the Islamic faith's scripture, the Quran? It is. The angel comes to announce to Mary that she will bear a son named Jesus. Jesus is interpreted a little bit differently as a prophet, as a rabbi, as a wise man. But among people of the book, is how that's kind of termed, they also included that, uh, that part of the uh, story of the life of Jesus. There's, oh, and by the way, this is from old-timey Persia, which is now Iran. And uh, you notice it's written in Arabic. There's the angel Gabriel, again with wings, and a lot of other things going on there. And there's Mary. So Gabriel is making that announcement to Mary, right? In the Quran. All right. Now, uh, what is his name? I have to read this. Domenicos Theotokopoulos. Domenicos Theotokopoulos, you think, hey, is that that guy who plays uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks, I think, right? The Greek guy? No, uh, he was Greek though. This person was named El Greco. Domenicos Theodorcopoulos um, was in Venice or was studying sort of the Venetian uh, style of painting at the time. In the 1500s, now we're going back up to the 1500s, late 1500s, maybe around 1600, El Greco, the painter, pictured the Annunciation, that is to say, Gabriel sharing the news of uh, the coming birth of Jesus with Mary, his mother. Uh, he, he painted it this way. And this is just amazing. I want you to see a couple things in here. Okay? Can you see Mary? There she is. Again, she's always reading something. Let's find out what that is. I don't know what it is. There's Gabriel with the announcement. Look at that. He's got short, kind of reddish hair. And what are those right there? He's wings. He has wings. It doesn't say it in there. And guess what? who's joining him? A celestial uh, orchestra. Look at this. There's stringed instruments. There's a harp in there. There's flutes. All sorts of stuff going on in the clouds above the announcing by Gabriel to Mary of the coming of Jesus. Finally, I promised you a unicorn I want to deliver. Katerina von Bora, um, that is to say Mrs. Martin Luther, entered a convent at five five years old. I think it was because her family was super poor and they wanted her to have an education. The only way to do that, back in the old timey days, she was born in 1499, by the way. So back in the early 1500s, kind of the way to get educated was to go to a convent or a monastery. But they sent her away at five. She changed to another convent at like nine. So she spent her life in there. And I want you to see this piece, which is just kind of amazing. This is called the Annunciation as an Allegorical Unicorn Hunt. What? Well, back in the old timey days, Christ was sometimes imagined as a unicorn, okay? Uh, and I want you to just take a look, take a gander at this picture and I'll point out a couple things. There's Mary and a unicorn, AKA Jesus, if you want to say that. Can you find Gabriel in there? Where's Gabriel? There's so much going on. There's Gabriel. He's got a horn he's blowing with words coming out of it. 
He's got dogs there. What? Yeah, there is a lot happening in here. Okay, there's other people surrounding it. I want to show you over here is, uh, and if you look really close at the Latin words, Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Okay, they're telling a big whole story. This was a piece of paper in a manuscript, in a book, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a manuscript in a book that was seriously about this big, about five inches by about seven inches, okay? This whole thing fit on that. I had to blow it up so you could see some of this stuff. All right, I'm gonna step out for a second because I wanna show you a couple things here. There's Noah's, right, Noah's Ark there, can you see that? Oops, Judy, I'm having trouble getting my, uh, I'm gonna use my pointer again. Okay, and here's the dogs that are named. Can you see the dogs that are hunting with Gabriel? So Gabriel's depicted as a hunter there. He's got dogs that are named Truth, Justice, Peace, and Mercy. Okay, so they, it's, I guess it stands that they would follow Jesus, follow the unicorn to Mary. Mary's got blonde hair in this one. And again, Gabriel, even though he's supposed to be a hunter, has some wings there. Anyway, this is from the Morgan Library. If you go to themorgan.org, it has an amazing picture of it and a chance to sort of interact with this photo. So if you get a chance, themorgan.org, and it's an amazing thing from the 1500s. Again, Katerina von Bora, uh, the future Mrs. Luther, might have even had a look at that book. You never know, okay? Judy, it's time for me to play my triangle, all right? I'm gonna say, come and get it. Come and get this next song. You probably know this one. It's called Praise Him, Praise Him, right? We're going to change it to God. We're just going to say praise God, praise God. And then remember Judy was talking about love. We haven't forgot. Every time I say love, I'm going to ding this thing. Do you have something to ding? Don't ding a person, but ding a thing if you can. Okay? Don't break anything either. It goes like this. Praise God, praise God, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Praise God, praise God, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Let's do one more verse where we'll say, love God, love God. And by all the little children, we mean youngsters or young friends who did those beautiful hearts for us, right, Judy? Or a, a child of any age, okay, because we're all God's children. So it'll be love God, ready? Here we go. Love God, love God, all the little children. God is love, God is love. Love God, love God, all the little children. God is love, God is love. Hey, thanks for dinging along. Thanks for singing along. And we gotta get going along, don't we, Judy? It's time to go. We wanna remind you that we're gonna take a little break because there's so many things, right, Judy? You talked about there's rejoicing spirit, there's Christmas services, there's Christmas Eve services. There's so many things where you can participate and be involved in the life of our Savior's Lutheran Church here in Salt Lake City. And we would love for you to be and participate, uh, to be at and participate in them all. So a Merry Christmas, right, Judy? And a Happy New Year. You'll see us again before that, but I'll just put that out there now as we wish you the benediction. What does benediction mean? Bene means good. Hey, molto bene, very good. And diction is a word. So here's a good word to send you along with, and you get to participate. Um, you know who I give thanks to, Judy? And I know you do. Thanks be to God, right? For this day, for friends like you who join us, for Judy, for music teachers, for everybody, for our saviors. So we're gonna say thanks be to God. Let's do it in four, ready, Judy? Four, a three, a two, a one. Thanks be to God, now amen. Amen, Alle, alleluia. There you go. Now, you get to hear a benediction, and we'll have our little sending song, and I hope you come through for me with a thanks be to God, amen, hallelujah. I might ding it up a little bit too. You got a thing to ding? Ding it. Here we go, ready, Judy? Uh, goodbye, everybody, bye, everybody. So long, it's time to go. Go in, may the Lord bless and keep you, and may God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you always and give you peace. 
go in peace, serve the Lord. Nice. Amen. Alle, alleluia. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and spread the love around. <laughs>